Hello all and uh, welcome to the uh, Chess Magic channel, Shahmat Rock and Roll. Um, so this is a bit, this is experimental. Um, basically, I, I want to start a new series in English about my best losses. And it's a, it's a whole new approach based on um, basically a YouTube video clip that Neil Postman, uh, for those who know him, um, talked about. This is way back in the 80s, 90s. Um, not that the 80s and the 90s are the same thing, but back, you know, from that period. And um, I'll, I'll just, you know, let's, you can, you can tell by the title it's going to be good, right? So let's just uh, see what he has to say and, and, and I'll tell you why this is how I base my approach on, on chest uh, tutoring. Thank you, Canis. I've tended to be so ineffective uh, in achieving their goals. And then it did occur to me that uh, doctors and lawyers uh, are usually, uh, 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 well, let's say more effective than educators in achieving their goals. And I began to wonder why. And uh, it, uh, it further occurred to me that the uh, it seems that one of the reasons is that both doctors and lawyers always emphasize the negative. Now, there we go on that one again. But, I mean, doctors are not really concerned with health. Their business is sickness. And lawyers are not generally concerned with justice. They're concerned with injustice. Uh, and because doctors, just to stay with them for a moment, concerned with sickness, and in fact, their definition of health, for the most part, is the absence of sickness. Uh, they have a focus to their observations and to their therapies. And I wondered if this wouldn't be useful for educators. Educators are constantly trying to make kids smarter and more intelligent. And it, it occurred to me that this is almost impossible to do because no one really knows what being smart means or what the intelligent means. I mean, there are so many varieties of smartnesses and intelligences. I wondered what would happen if the teachers took a page from the doctor's book and started to concentrate on stupidity. Now, once you think about it that way, then, what you realize is that stupidity has is curable. I mean, and it's identifiable. Most people Just a minute more, and you'll get the idea. Oh, come on, don't go perfect on me now. Most people can recognize when someone is making a mistake, when, when an error has been made, or when someone is thinking badly, it's much more difficult to know if someone is speaking the truth or if they're speaking wisely. But if they're speaking badly, I don't mean in a grammatical sense, but I mean if, if their sentences are not being effective, are not producing what they want to produce, we can see that and we can identify in many cases why this is so. So I reckon so I titled that piece, The Educationist is Painkiller, because I thought, what would happen if teachers thought of themselves as people to whom others come to for a remedy, the way they come to a doctor, but the remedy that the teachers put offer is how not to be stupid. The only trouble... So the interviewer was about to say the only trouble, and we don't really know what he has to say about the trouble. Uh, one easily uh, identifiable uh, problem is that today most kids, if you show them how to, you know, how you lost and you sort of put yourself on the line there, 
um, they will just think, well, yeah, you, you know, you, you might maybe you're just shit, you know, maybe you don't know much and uh, and you know you're just showing your ignorance and you're proud of it. That might be the message for a young mind who doesn't understand, um, you know, what's um, what the stakes are. So uh, I'm going to try and make a series. I, because I made a bit of a, a long introduction on this, uh, I'm going to uh, show a quick game. Now, this quick game is maybe one of the longest games I actually played, uh, though I don't think there's that many uh, instructive points within it. So that's why I say it's going to be short, because I'm only going to be focusing on, on the, the critical moments and uh, mainly on what my mistake was. And I only made really one big mistake. Now, uh, the other reason I chose this name is because it's a household name. Uh, it's uh, Richard Rapport uh, that I met in the Belgrade League in 2018. Uh, I had three out of three on board one. I was playing Rapport. You'll see the game that I played. And I was going to go to the Olympiads uh, for Wales Play for Wales on board one two days afterwards. So I couldn't even finish the league. I had to go. So I was really on a bit of a roll. Um, unfortunately, that Olympia didn't work out too well for me. I, I don't. I, it was only three hours uh, time zone difference, but kind of got jet lagged, strangely enough. But anyway, that's a different story. Let's uh, let's delve into this game and see where the mistakes are. Okay, so I. Um, it starts out as a can, okay. So we'll just shoot through the opening, uh, as, 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 because it's it's not about that. Um, okay, so there's this line, and I got relatively good success in this line. I generally come back to F3. Uh, the idea being uh, trying to at some point take a grip here, maybe put one of the pieces on E4 uh, after Castle and Rookie one. Uh, most of the time, black uh, plays something to the lines of knight c6 and queen b8. That's that's the kind of the main idea here to get some kind of grip on 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 e5. Um, problem is you can actually kind of play that anyway because it, I don't. It's not really takeable if you exchange everything. Queen f3, bishop f4 coming very fast. Uh, black is just lagging in development. So. That's the main idea here. The other idea is the way he plays, which is uh, to, oh, my computer is going pear-shaped. Okay, so it's just to, to kick back. And um, there are two move orders to get here. I believe if he didn't lose that tempo, at some point he could have played bishop d6 in one go. And then make me make me come back to f3 but that's that's it's irrelevant i'm just um uh, dashing through the moves now um you just saw my next move um bit of an eccentric move uh it's um it's definitely not a mistake this was all prep so the prep actually went pretty far because i was i was pretty much sure he's going to play sicilian and i prepped him like for three hours or something crazy because obviously i was playing rapport so i really wanted to make a Probably with us a bit of too much energy, and I should have tried to guess sooner. Because at the end, I was like, I'm sure he's going to play the Sicilian. And um, and so if he was going to play the Sicilian, I was more or less sure he would play one of these lines. Because he's once you, you, you pinpoint which, you know, you can play French, you can play all types of things. But once you, you've you kind of pinpointed which one he's going to use, he has his, his you know, fetish lines. So... Um, so I, I really looked deep into this. Now, these days, this isn't so shocking because you got all those openings where, you know, there's an early queen takes d4 and then the queen kicks back only to d2. And we know the idea. It's to, to fianchetto the bishop this way. Okay. Uh, here there's an extra idea. Maybe this square could come in handy at some point. You know, always keeping an eye out for it. You never know when it could come in handy. Anyway, he plays bishop e7. And um, and here I don't play the B3 move. So B3 is is a a bit of a Spider-Man um, 
you know, style. Like, you know, I'm sort of being very flexible and just shooting off the walls, um, you know. But uh, here there's another move. So you can put pause if you want to and try and look for your candidates and just to see if it's in, in your range of candidates. It's always important to uh, at least not miss a good candidate move. Right, even if even if it's not the move that you play, uh, the the more often your your your, you know, the correct move is in your candidates, that that is generally a sign of progress. So at least don't leave it out. Make sure you have all the options. Okay, so here I played the move B four, right, which is kind of again you know uh, weird move. Now I didn't invent it. I did know the concept. I had a few games like that. I have notably another game against Chuchilov, which I lost, but I had a really good position. I really missed him on that one. So I might show that one next. Um, and and in another few positions, I played this type of thing where I'm basically fixing the structure and now I'm just going to go and attack it. Now, obviously, he can't take. Otherwise, it would be a bit too simple uh, because simply I can just take the pawn back and... There you have it, sort of thing. Um, I do believe that's the correct move. Yeah, queen a5, I'll probably have something like c3, right? So I fall back on track, and if we exchange the knight for the bishop and we get the dark square bishop, then I'm definitely doing all right. Even if I even if I lose a pawn somewhere, that would I, I would still do that. So um, so we can't take that. So he develops, and it was all prep actually. Because I, he'd already had something similar, I think, or I can't remember the details four years ago now. Um, my G4, and I'll tell you when it stops, because this, I also had it. Now, I was kind of second guessing myself, like wondering, like, am I still in the prep or am I just playing moves that look like uh, what we looked at? And actually, I was still in it up until, up until now. Here, the correct move, if you want to look for your your options, it's a good moment, it's kind of a critical moment in the opening, and I took a long time. But I was trying to base myself on memorization. Like I had the moves, they were mixed up in my head, and I was just trying to remember rather than trying to calculate. Because the positions, you know, this type of position, it's it's based on on computer algorithm, right? It's not, you know, it's like this move, blah, 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 and you it's not really chess at the end of the day. I mean, sometimes. Uh, and so um, I knew that there was going to be a knight d5 at some point. So it was now. I missed it. I played it one move later. And it was supposed to give something resembling this. Right? I mean, whatever whatever this is. And, um, and so white is supposed to have an advantage. I think that's what the computer gives anyway. Uh, with the exchange down, but uh, you got that past B pawn and the knight on on B8 doesn't look too great. And if you exchange it, then the pawn gets all the way to A7, etc. Okay. So anyway, I forgot about that, and but I'm not. I'm definitely not going to beat myself up over that, right? Um, Bishop B2. This okay doesn't seem too worrying. I play the knight D5, and in the end. I can slip in b6, and and I don't care about the exchange. Yeah, what's this move? Knight a8 is a mistake. Yeah, it looks, it seems so. Maybe I was calculating that, and uh, so I put it. Um, but it is a kind of a funny move. You have to admit, right? Because if if knight c6, there might be rook takes a6. I wonder why it's bad. Oh, he just takes here. Uh -huh. Okay, well, again, um, I'll, I'll allow myself to be convinced. Anyway, um, knight c6, and here I, I have a bishop attack, so I play bishop c5, which is logical. And so here, okay, here I'm not going to make a mistake. Here I'm going to play a really good move, actually. The mistake comes later. And um, so try to guess what... Again, just go for candidates in the first instance. You know, make sure that you get all the um, all the possibilities in, right? So you 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 can go 
who go all the way up to eight candidates and then cut it down to like a healthy five and then try and say, okay, well, I'm going to delve deeper into three of them. You, know? uh, you don't have to delve deeper. You, if you want, you can use this position as a, a training for calculation. Um, so, okay. Um, definitely knight takes a6 is a move. But I felt that, okay, he's going to sack the exchange anyway. And um, somehow, I don't know, it wasn't satisfactory in my mind. I'm guessing f3 is a move, but I can play that later anyway. It's not really um, critical that I play at this point in time. So I played a, a kind of a move that could escape your candidates, or at least could, even if it did manage to get to one of your candidates, maybe uh, you would reject it pretty fast, uh, namely because you would think, well, um, I'm blundering the knight. Right, so this is why you know you could you could easily reject this, uh, just thinking well he takes and he's taking a rook on check. Fact of the matter is he can't get back, or more precisely he can and he has to, but I get the rook back, or this is uh, forced. And now I attack the knight and I get the a6 pawn. So I get kind of the same thing as if I'd taken on a6, right? If I'd played this, except for we have the rooks less and I thought well so taking the rooks off I have the bishop pair um can't be it can't be a bad thing right I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm that much closer to a draw because let's face it um at this at this stage I, I, I would you know I'd be happy to shake his hand right um so anyway yeah rook b1 so I get to here and obviously the mistake has to turn up soon because otherwise, because um, this, this position is a dead draw, actually. And uh, he plays king f7. And now he told me that I just missed something. Right? I uh... Now, here it's a very easy mistake to make. Uh, I mean, I, I justify it to myself completely. Uh, because you would think there are two ways, right? There are two ways. I'm a pawn down. I have the bishop pair. And that bishop pair is what constitutes my, you know, my compensation. And I figured as long as I have the bishop pair, that pawn more is kind of immaterial. But there's a way to make it even more immaterial, right? It's to go down, you know, to simplify down to uh, an opposite bishop endgame. And, and simply, I was too focused on at least keep the, the activity, you know, at least at least you know, stay active. Don't 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 be passive and, and all that type of talk, which is basically nonsense. Because uh, in this situation, you well, I have to be very concrete. And he told me um, you'd have played bishop b five. Um, that you know, I was getting ready to to to, to sign the, the the score sheet, and so it would resemble something like uh, f four, maybe. And we just exchange, and then you run the pawn up to, to c5, so there's nothing on the light squares. And now, simply, there's just no zoom, right? You can imagine that the best that he can that he can get is the king somehow arrives here in the center, and his pawns have advanced, and he gets like two pawns against one. And I just stay there with my king. Um, and I'm basically waiting, I guess. I'm just waiting, and I don't believe that there's a zook possible. I'll just... If he gets there with his king... Oh... Do, 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 do. Better not. There could be a zook. There could be a zook. But, hang on. First he has to go all the way around. Maybe I can liquidate on the cool side. I don't know. I, I, I took his word for it, and the computer justifies. So maybe... You can find a way. There's always a way, right? But what I did instead, uh, I would call it a mistake. Maybe it's a psychological mistake. Uh, in any case, um, you know, at this point, he kind of, he just created a web. And I just imagined, you know, that there was, he was concocting some kind of, uh, you know, Machiavellic plan to, and, and you know, 
so some sort of Dvoretsky book where the you know the the corresponding squares and something that I a page that I hadn't read, and uh, at the end it just got to me. So I just you know I just went around and it just went on forever, and uh, I thought no, you can't get through, you can't get through, and just to um, well, I, I'm just running through it now, right, just to show you how he did get me in the end. Right, it went back and forth 20 times. And then then it came to this. Now I could already feel like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be in trouble now. And, um, yeah, and he, here I'm lost, but I sort of, you know, try and be uh, until the end. And there you go. So was, that was the end of it. Anyway, it was it was kind of, it was it was fun while it lasted, you know. I really did uh, believe that uh, you know I was you know I was free out of free and uh, playing rap while going to the Olympiad like I'm living the life. And um, and here actually something really funny uh, happened. And um, <laughs> um, something really funny happened. It's that. And it was worthwhile losing. I mean, I would have preferred the point, obviously. I would have, let's say the half point. Um, it's his whole team clapped, right? Because obviously everybody finished. And uh, they just, they didn't believe that uh, he was going to get through because it was supposedly a dead draw. And he just went around it and he clapped. And I was like, you know, just the fact that they they clapped him, applauded him beating me, it was like wow, that that just felt such like an honor, you know. Like uh, the, the the this great champion is being applauded for beating me. So there was there was like a kind of a, a compensation there, and uh, it makes for a good story. So um, there you go. That was my game with uh, Richard Rapport. Uh Please check out our website. We're not trying to monetize this now. It's not with the the, the hundred or the fifty. Uh, views that I'm uh, I'm able to monetize this anyway but uh, it's not at all our intention our intention is just to to show that we are uh, you know we do have some kind of uh, pedagogy that we are actually uh, not just you know chess trainers is not just a job but it's actually a career and we you know we're trying to have insights and, and different attack things from uh, different angles and so um, we we just want you to come to our camp, which is dirt cheap, to be honest, 650 euros all inclusive for uh, for 36 hours of chess and hotel and food and the bus going back from Belgrade um, to the airport, to the, the airport, to the village. So uh, chess-magic.com and um, uh, Check it out. Check it out, and then uh, you got your emails and you got all the contacts there. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Miltes to put a link in the description. Okay. So uh, I hope I hope to do more Miltes is on the tournament at the moment. So I should be producing more videos, and I think I'm going to stick with this in English and and, and just show my losses because uh, it's just much more fun. Uh, okay. Take care and uh, see you soon.